Hi, it's Barry Moore back with another Tactical 20 podcast. Welcome to the Active Marketer Podcast, where we talk about how to design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. You can find out all the tips, tactics, and techniques you need to get more customers and sell more stuff over at theactivemarketer.com. Now, here's your host, Barry Moore. Hi, I'm your host, Barry Moore, and this is going to be another Tactical 20 Podcast. The Tactical 20 Podcasts are all about giving you an actionable tip, technique, or tactic that you can take away and implement in your business in less than 20 minutes. Welcome to Episode 71 of the Active Marketer Podcast. In this Tactical 20, we're going to be talking all about the new feature that was just released recently, Automation Split Testing with Inactive Campaign. Going to talk about what it is, why you want to use it, and I'm going to give you three ways you can go out and use it tomorrow. So, what is automation split testing? Why would we want to use it? Well, automation split testing allows you to create A B testing or split the branches inside your automation so that some of your contacts running through that automation go down branch A, some of the contacts go down branch B. This allows you to test different scenarios in your follow up marketing. So, for example, if you had an upsell sequence, How you put that upsell sequence together is largely just an educated guess on what's going to convert the best. And you might swap out those automations every now and then to see whether automation A will beat automation B. But now you can run the split test right within the same automation. So you could change your copy between the A and B branches. You could change the length of the automation, how many emails that person gets. You could change the duration. You could change a whole bunch of different things. So... We're going to talk about the different kinds of split tests you can run with this new feature. Um, there's a number of ways you can split the contact, contacts going through your automation. You can do an even split, which means um, basically just what it sounds like. If you've got a 1,000 people running through your automation, uh, when they hit that split test step, 500 are going to go down path A, 500 are going to go down path B, and those people will be continue to be split indefinitely. So it will just go until you tell it to stop, essentially. Um, When used in conjunction with goals, um, this, however, will tell you which one of those branches is converting to our goal the best. So which one has the higher conversion rate? So for example, you could put branch A and that could be uh, have one offer in it or one price point or whatever, one set of copy, whatever it is you're testing. And at the bottom of path A, you just have a goal that says, right, you know, path A goal, um, they buy product X, Y, Z. So, and then down path B, you split test the other copy or the other offer or whatever it is you're testing. And you have another goal down at the bottom of path B, which is, you know, it's the same goal, essentially the path B goal, did they buy product X, Y, Z. Then you can run that split test for a while and you can go check your goals and you can see which path is converting better, path A or path B. So split testing used in conjunction with goals is a pretty powerful thing. And like I said, that that even split indefinitely will just run until you tell it to stop. Um, there are also some conditional split tests that you can run, meaning they'll run for a certain amount of time and then they'll stop or they'll default to the winning side, A or B. So there's a couple of different ones you can run. You can run a number of contacts. So you can say, right, the first, say, 500 people through this automation, I want to split. Once we've run 500 people through there, uh, automatically figure out which path is better. And you have to define a goal to tell it with path, which path is better. But which path is better at the end of my 500 contacts? Then send everybody else down that path. So if path A is better, for example, at the end, it's converted better than everyone else following the 500, 501, and onwards will go down path A until you tell it differently. So you can run a conditional test on a number of number of contacts. So what you have to do is basically, if you're going to do that, you can build the goal into your split test. You have to tell it what the goal is going to be. So again, for example, if we're trying to get pers- someone to buy um, product XYZ, then we're going to say, right, split people split the first 500 people down path A and B, and then look at how many of those people have the purchase XYZ tag 
And that will tell you that whether whether the people going down A or the people going down B converted better. And if B converted better, then we're going to send everybody, the rest of those contacts, down B after the 500 split test is over. So you could run it for 100, you could run it for 300, 500, whatever that number is, to think you're going to get a, a reasonable conclusion to your split test. And then everyone else following that number uh, will go down the winning path, whatever you define as the winning path. The last type of split test is a date-based split test. So, for example, you might want to run a split test for a month, for example. So you want you would say is, I want this split to run uh, until the last day in December. Uh, until that point, you run half the people down A and half the people down B. Um, I might not necessarily know how many people are going to go through that automation in that particular time frame, but you're just saying, like, for the whole month of December, split them between A and B. And then what will happen is at the end of that time, uh, it will default to putting everybody down the B path. So the A path will go dormant after that last day that you've specified. So you'll have to build in a goal yourself, like we talked about in that first scenario where there's a goal at the bottom of path A and a goal at the bottom of path B. If you want to determine uh, which, uh, which of those paths work better for your desired action, whether that's a link click or whether that's a sign up or a form submission or whatever it's going to be, um, or purchase. So you'll have to build those goals into your automation. So those are the three scenarios, an even split. Uh, a numbered split where a number of contacts uh, go through the split and then it defaults to the winning side. And then the last one is a date-based split where it will just continue to split until the date that you specify. So how can we use this? Well, we can use this a number of different ways. And here's some things you can run away and split test straight away. So I would say the best place to use this right off the bat would be in an upsell sequence. If you have one of those, if you're trying to upsell somebody to a particular product or service, uh, let's start testing um, a couple of different things. One, you can test your copy, obviously. So um, you might uh, you might get a couple of different copywriters to write your emails, or you might have a go at writing a couple of different versions of an email chain for that upsell sequence. Say it's four emails. You might uh, test you know one set of copy on path A, one set of copy on path B, and see which one converts better. You could test the length of the sequence. So you might say, you know, does a three email sequence convert better or does a five email sequence convert better? So you could test the number of emails in the sequence. You could test the wait intervals. So what converts better, a sequence that runs every single day or a sequence that runs every couple of days or once a week or whatever. So you could, you could test the wait intervals as well. And then the other thing to look at testing is the offer itself. Um, Try two different offers. Well, structure the offer differently. Try two different price points. Um, try some bonuses. Try whatever. But um, structure the offer different between path A and path B and see which offer converts better. Um, I would suggest you start out testing big ideas. So test screams, not whispers, right? So, you know, don't don't start out testing the link color or the button color. Start, t- start out testing radically different offers. So... Um, once you find an offer that converts better, then you can start tweaking how do we better even get more juice out of that offer by tweaking the copy or tweaking the button colors or whatever. But start testing big ideas first. Once you've got a big idea that works well, then start buckling down and start tweaking that offer once you know that it works. All right, so that's automation split testing. Um, There's a whole article, a whole walkthrough of exactly how this works over at the blog at theactivemarketer.com. However, if you just go to the show notes for this episode, just by going to theactivemarketer.com forward slash 7171, um, there'll be a link there to the complete walkthrough with screen captures and the whole lot. And that will show you exactly how you can get split testing set up tomorrow. See you next time, everybody. All right, that's our Tactical 20 podcast for this week. If you have any questions or any topics you'd like to see covered on future Tactical 20 podcasts, you can always send me an email at barry, B-A-R-R-Y, at theactivemarketer.com and let us know what you'd like to see. Also, if you head over to the show notes, um, 
for this episode and just leave a comment or leave a comment in any of the episode show notes. Tell us what you'd like to see and we'll make sure we cover it on an upcoming episode. So get out there and design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. See you next week, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Active Marketer Podcast. You can find the show notes and all the latest marketing automation news over at theactivemarketer.com.